everybody, it's Jonathan Senor Smoke from Curto's Ring of Fire here in Westchester County. I bid you welcome. I hope you and yours are safe. It's uh, April 15th, a few days after Easter, and that's what I'm here to talk about, was the cook that I accomplished this, that I aced this past Sunday uh, on the Kamado Joe. Easter lamb, something that I've never made before, never made lamb. Uh, usually Easter is an away game for us. We're usually at my mother's house, and due to the uh, circumstances with the pandemic hanging over our heads, we had to hang at the house. And um, um, we, uh, my wife took care of all the cooking on the inside, all the amazing things like lasagna, et cetera, et cetera. But I took uh, the protein, the lamb, and I tackled it outside on the Kamado Joe. And it was just unbelievable. What I did was I got a leg of lamb. And it was actually too much. It was uh, 13 pounds. I did not want that much. After being deboned and cleaned up, we had about, you know, I'd say about six pounds. And um, the butcher rolled it up, trussed it, seasoned it, garlic, rosemary, uh, some other herbs. The setup was simple. It was just fire um, in the box. And um, I had the Kamado Joe accessory rack set up with a um, aluminum foil pan with potatoes, uh, onions, and uh, some herbs, and uh, chicken broth. And then um, right above that was the cooking grate where the lamb sat with not in a pan, it was just there, so it would drip right into the, uh, the pan with the potatoes. So that, that pan was important because not only did it act as a capture area for the drippings of the lamb to further flavor the potatoes and onions, but it also acted as a heat shield, a barrier of sorts from the hot charcoal, uh, preventing it from, from burning the lamb. Now, the interesting thing about this cook, and really the thing that I want to drive home in this video, is that the nonsense that people, like, you know, when they say they don't want a Kamado Joe, they don't want a ceramic cooker because they are concerned about having to manage the temperature. It's too much of a pain in the neck. I want to do pellet because it's so easy, set it and forget it. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, but it's nonsense. Um, I was set, the instructions that I had were to cook this at 350 degrees for about an hour and a half. The cooking time was completely off. The cooking temperature was fine. I had this thing pinned, pinned at 350, I'd say between 350 and 360, 365 for three hours. The only time towards the end it started to go down a little bit because I um, did not put enough charcoal in it and um, I had to reload with a few more pieces. But um, really what you have to do, and I tell all my customers who buy the Joe, or they buy a Caliber or Primo, you know, whatever ever Kamado that we sell here, is that figure out what temperature that you want to be cooking at. And then what you have to do is, I'm going to use 350, right? Just use that as an example. At about 300 degrees, 310, you need to start applying the brakes. That's what it's all about. You have to start shutting down the top and the bottom um, vent is more, sen the temperature is more sensitive to the bottom vent because that's the intake for the oxygen. This is expelling it, this is bringing it in. So certainly the temperature readings are going to be far more affected by the bottom than the top, but it's a slight game of manipulation. And then I'm telling you, and I think there's a picture flashed on the screen right now, it was pinned. It doesn't go up and down, it doesn't waver. You don't need to stand on top of it. And here's the other thing. There are devices nowadays. I mean, Kamado Joe has their eye command. There are other, um, you know, barbecue guru. There's, um, What's the other one I'm about to start carrying over here? I'm drawing a blank right now. Pit Fire Boss or something. Anyway, there are, there are ways via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, whatever, to actually manage the temperature uh, as well remotely. So, you know, I mean, you can do it the old school way like I've been doing where you just set it and you're done, or you can use technology. So I don't buy the argument any longer that the Joe or, you know, the Big Green Egg or whatever, these vessels are bitches to manage, and it's just much easier to go with pellet. I mean, it's easier f with pellet, but then you're not getting that... Uh, th I mean, I think everybody would agree with me that the taste of something cooked on charcoal, um, it's uh, on a whole nother level. So anyway, food for thought, no pun intended. Um, the, the cook lasted over three hours. 
um, and that's probably just because the uh, the roast was much larger than anticipated. Um, took it off, let it sit for about 15 minutes, maybe even 20. Let the muscle fibers relax. Uh, let the juices kind of settle throughout and then we sliced and my gosh it was just it was fantastic it was absolutely fantastic because and, he, and with my family I think I cooked it a little more than I normally would have because they don't like to eat medium rare even with the steak so I had to go more medium with it but still the lamb was fantastic the exterior just that great caramelized like lacquer the coloring I mean just fan, just fantastic one other thing I did do in terms of the coloring I will mention this, is that a few times I did baste it during the cook with a combination of butter, soy sauce, garlic powder. I think that was it. And I would brush that on every, you know, 20 to 30 minutes or so. So that certainly lent to the uh, nice uh, uh, coloring that you'll, uh, that you'll see on this. So the key, key takeaway, all right, is that you must just get used to applying the brakes at about 40 to 50 degrees below your, your, your target temperature, ease into it, and then you're gonna be fine. So there's no reason, I'm, this whole stigma about these things being pains in the asses to manage, it's just, uh, you know, I'm just kicking it to the curb. I, I've, I've been using these things for five years now. There's plenty of other videos on the internet talking about this, so don't let that scare you off from this just amazing, amazing performance, because, you know, the bottom line is, with everything that we sell here, and we sell more outdoor cooking products and I would gander any store in the entire Northeast. Um, there is nothing, every single grill is gonna have its downside, right? Uh, I'm telling you, when it comes to cooking on ceramic, it's the only cooking device that does everything. It grills, it roasts, it bakes, it sears, it smokes, whatever you wanna do, you can do on one of these. And that, my friends, is the bottom line. We have Kamado Joe's in stock. We have Calibers. We have Primos. If anybody wants to take the step, since everybody's been home for weeks and we're probably gonna be home for a few weeks longer, the weather's gonna be turning. Business is already picking up uh, in terms of outdoor grills, etc. Give us a call, 914-793-5600. Contactless delivery is available for you. You don't need to come in. You can just call up on the telephone, place your order, Girl will be delivered into your yard, assembled, put together, et cetera, et cetera. Contact lists. All right. So everybody, questions, hit me up, Jonathan at Curtos.com. You got the phone number. And uh, everybody, be safe. We hope to see you soon.